Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and discuss about a very interesting feature in React, which is only available in React 18 and above. Also, if you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be creating a lot of content on JavaScript, full stack web development, React, and a lot of similar topics. So if you want to keep yourself updated to this stuff, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. And we're gonna be taking a look at concurrent UI again in React. I did a video on this, I think a couple of years ago when concurrent mode was first announced but since then concurrent mode has been a little delayed in terms of when it would come out but when it will come out finally it will be awesome and in react 18 you can pretty much opt in into concurrent modes a few few of the features now not actually going exactly into concurrent mode how it really works and so on and so forth but what we'll be taking a look at is something known as create root in react which is different and which is what you have to use in order to opt into concurrent mode. So what I want to do here is actually go ahead and inside the code down playground, I want to open the index.jsx file and I will just remove the strict mode for now. So the moment we do that, what's going to happen is you're going to see that we have this line called react dom dot render then the component and where it should be rendered on the screen. And it, this is pretty standard stuff. We have discussed this in our React course and full stack learning path as well. But what has changed in React 18, and I'm running React 18 in this one, it's an alpha preview, but I'm still running or React 18. What React 18 brings us is that it brings us support of this create root. And what this is, like the comment says, is that it allows you to opt into concurrent mode. So we'll discuss what concurrent mode really is once it is a little bit more stable and out in the wild but for now let's just opt into this new rendering feature of react so what you need to do is you can just say what is my root element in this case it's document.get element by id with root and then what you have to do is say react react dom dot create root and then pass in the root element and you can say this is my react root for example, something like this. And you can see right here, once you do that, you can call a dot render on this. So let's take a look at what this render, how this render we have to use in the code name example. And all I have to do is say react root dot render and then this thing right here, right? This could be pretty much any element, right? And like it says that you can also nest them together here as well. So what this does is that it allows us to use these features, which you will be able to see in the concurrent mode table. Let me just see if I can find that table. So yeah, this is the table which shows you the legacy mode, the blocking mode and the concurrent mode. So legacy mode is the thing which is available right now, right in React pretty much. So you know that we could reuse suspense in react. Why? Because although it's a concurrent mode feature, but it still is available in the legacy mode. The blocking mode we'll probably not talk a lot about here because blocking mode is for those code bases who have some custom, you know, implementations of a few things and which get broken when we shift to concurrent mode. So it's like a middle ground between legacy mode and concurrent mode. Almost always, if you're trying to create a new project after React 18, you want to start with concurrent mode right away, right? And that's what create root does. So there are two to three modifiers here. You can see the first one is create blocking root. The second one is create root and the third one is just directly render on react on. So these respectively just render and you know, just start the react JS rendering engine into that particular mode. We'll stick to the create root mode. And what it does is one of the features you can see right here, which says us is automatic batching of multiple set states, right? Which is not available here. I mean, it is kind of, we'll see what this means but this is definitely available in these two. And this is what we will discuss in this video, how create root makes it work. Not exactly how, because that's an internal detail, but how you can make it work. There are so many other areas which are very interesting and we should be exploring in the further videos, but this one I found the easiest and the most interesting one as well. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at this example from the official docs itself. And let me just go ahead and minimize this so I can show you what's exactly happening. So. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna switch, let's say, I'm gonna switch to back to legacy mode. For now, I'm gonna say react dom dot render app inside of root, right? So the moment I do this, refresh this page, I'm in the legacy mode. 
Now pay close attention to what's happening here. We have a first component, component one, we have a component two, and we have this app, right? And this is the exported component. So you can see component two actually calculates how many times it has been re-rendered, right? This is, this is just calculating how many times it has been re-rendered, right? And this count will update here every single time this re-renders. Um, component one does the similar thing. The only two difference, the only one difference, not two, is in these both of them, is that when I click on this button called next, in component two, I do this update inside of a promise callback, right? And this is just a regular promise, which does not have any major significance, but you can see I do this callback inside of the promise, uh, this update inside of a callback, and inside component one, I do this right inside the function. Now, in the legacy mode, what you would see is something weird that when I click on the component one, which is this function, when I click on this, you can see the number keeps on incrementing and the re-renders also increment in the similar fashion, right? Why? Because right here, when I click on this button, although we have two state updates happening here, React batches them together and just performs a one DOM update, right? That means this function re-renders, this function is destroyed and called by React only one time, even though we are setting two state variables here. This is important because if there was an await call here, it would have been two updates, right? Which also makes sense because await can pretty much take any arbitrary amount of time in order to resolve a promise. But here, what you see here is that in component two, even though these two calls are happening one after another, the fact they are inside of a promise callback results in the following code. So when I click on this, you can see we get two re-renders, not one. Then if I click on this again, we get four re-renders, not two, right? And so on. So you can see that in case I have a promise and I call a state update inside of that. So anytime you add more state updates, React will actually tear down this function and reconstruct it again and again and again on a single state update. This is bad performance wise because now React is doing multiple renders where one would have sufficed, right? React 18's concurrent mode, opting into concurrent mode fixes this. How? Because now if I go ahead and remove this and opt into the create root mode, which is our React concurrent mode. Now, if I go ahead and use the same code as before, this of course works just like before. But this right here also works like above because now what's happening is that we are using this thing right here, automatic batching of multiple set states. Now, the reason it says that it's a star because you can see that legacy mode has automatic batching in React managed events, but it's limited to one browser task, non-React events, whatever, right? This just means that you will not be able to have React batching these set state calls inside of promises or inside of callbacks or anything like that if you're not on react 18 right so th this is just one video one example of what create root will bring as um, as a change to react and there are interesting things here i mean if you try to look into suspense and suspense list suspense list is also interesting where you can actually define an order in which the components appear on the screen right so we'll discuss that as time goes on and as more and more features become stabilized but this is something i think was pretty interesting and pretty important and probably something you should even know about as well right that if you use multiple calls of functions like this you don't have to be afraid of multiple renders react is smart enough to just batch them all together and do it in one go so yep that's pretty much it for this video if you learned something from this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon